what we're here to talk about is flooring. We decided not to go with vinyl for the same reason as we didn't want to use polyfiller. It's toxic and the government says it's safe, but don't trust them because they lie. Because of money. We care about everyone, even when they don't care about us. So what we're doing is something that's actually a much more desired option. We're doing hardwood floor. Now, everyone, like insulation, thinks they're an expert on everything when it comes to construction, and, uh-oh, I'm not even an expert at doing my shoelaces. And there is so much I still don't know. So, get this one done up. I've done flooring quite a bit, and I understand what to do. I don't have a floor nailer, but I'm going to use the traditional old-school method, but I'm not using nails, I'm using screws. That's not a tradition but it should be probably stronger than using a stapler. You're not selling it. What I've got is these screws here, which are decking screws, and they are eight gauge by 40 mil. And they'll be going in on an angle into the tongue, and it should hold it nice and tightly without going through the flooring, which is great. Ah well, hindsight. As far as sealing the floor, I called up Bostick this morning and asked them, should I seal the flooring with a marine varnish? And they said, definitely, definitely not. Good to know. This stuff here, Ultra Set 3-in-1, is bloody heavy, but is also 3-in-1. You already said that. It is a moisture barrier, it is a sound deadener, and it is a glue adhesive. So that there will act as our moisture barrier. If we coat it with a varnish, that ain't going to stick to it, and it's not going to provide the sound deadening and the moisture barrier that we have spent a lot of money to get. Okay, fair enough. That's about 200 bucks a tub, very expensive, and unfortunately, it does just under the amount that we need for this bus. Well, don't do it then. <laughs> so we had to get two tubs. He's doing it. This here is a six mil notch trowel. I got the Bostic one because I didn't have a six mil one. It's got a really comfy grip on it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Good to know. I got these two trowels. This one here is just like a brick laying spatula thing. I don't know what they call it. And it's used to mix up this cement or this glue because when it's in storage, it gets like a milky film on the top and it needs a good thorough mix. But also, if I don't get the whole job done, which I'm definitely not because I'm starting too late today. You need to have some more confidence, okay? It will create like a film on it and it will need a remix. So I peel the film off and then give it a remix. This here is just a garden shovel spade thing. Oh, you have a way with words. And I found in using this product in the past, the best way to apply it and control how much you're applying is to actually scoop it out and then pour a line and then trail that line because otherwise you just wind up with crap everywhere. That's a scientific term for crap in your pants. And if you leave it out in the air for too long, it does create a skin over the glue and then obviously the glue doesn't work. So you have to scrape all that off and then redo it. Okay, so let's avoid that. <sighs> to avoid that, just use as much as you need as, as much as you can get done and because I'm doing a slower process than actually floor stapling I'm not going to be able to get through a lot in one run. Other tools you need handy little saw. I put fresh blades on these because it is a really sexy flooring and I don't want to ruin it with crappy old blades. Jigsaw because we're working on a bus and there is all sorts of craziness like this guy here so we'll have to do a, quite a few interesting cuts throughout this. Again Fresh blade, safety equipment. This here is very important because you want to make sure that the floor is clean before you apply your glue, because otherwise the glue might stick to the thing and not stick to the floor. It's best to have everything as spotless as you can get it. So clean it up. This here is my pre-drilling drill bit in my DeWalt drill. So I'll be using that to pre-drill the tongue. And this here is my impact driver which has to get to screw the screws in. And last but not least, vacuum. Is that important? Just in case you can't clean it out, use a little vacuum, suck everything out, make sure it is as clean as you can get it. 
for now, I'm gonna work out how I'm gonna get this straight. Either I'm gonna streamline it first and see if I can work something out that looks halfway straight. We have to show you this disclaimer. I'm not a professional floor installer. So I think I'm gonna start here, build out to here, and then work on this section because we've got cabinetry sitting on here. I've also got the battery box section. So it might be best to actually start over there. If I've got a straight line running across there, I think that'll look pretty schmexy. So anyway, I'm gonna get into it. We got there eventually. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna run a string line to see how straight it looks. Because it's a bus, it's kind of like doing a renovation where everything's gonna be out. So essentially, I'm just gonna make it look like it's straight and look like it's good. At least you're honest. In relation to everything else that's in the bus. All right, how does that look? Bloody hell, that looks all right. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. Running along the wheel hub, it looks great. Running along the step here, it looks fine. I'm gonna put that first piece on, on the end there, and I'm going to make sure that it is lined up at the same distance. A lot of boring math later. All right, so what I wound up doing was getting some of that leftover marine ply, that eight mil marine ply, and using that as a shim. I like the eight mil, it's given me about 10 mil because of the angle of the bus. It's sitting more like that rather than straight. So now I'm gonna pre-cut all my pieces, line them up so I can have a clean run. And then I'm gonna just double check that everything is lining up with my string line so that I have that straight line down the bus. One long angry line later. All right, so I've got a perfect distance now. So I know that that's gonna line up if I place it like that. Now, before I actually nail that one off, I will again measure it with this string line. But once he's in place, there's no going back. That sounds intimidating. So I'll take the string line out at that point. Here's this really expensive glue. Mind you, it's worth it. It's as unproven as it is controversial. Just give it a mix. All these little granules in a little bits of rubber. I think it's tire actually, so it's recycled as well. They look like pieces of Oreos. I like Oreo yogurt now. Yeah, and that's what gives you your perfect spacing underneath the flooring, as well as a sound deadening advantage as well. I like Oreo yogurt. Science? That's what I was talking about with the scoopy scoop. It's always nerve wracking when you do your first piece. And if you stuff it up, it kind of stuffs up the whole job. Don't mess this up, don't mess this up, don't mess this up. God, I forgot how messy this stuff is. Gross! So you pop him down, then you lift it up again. Jump up, jump up, and get down! Just to make sure that you're getting coverage on it. Wish me luck. Luck? Ha! I don't need no luck. Screws are wrong. They're just too thick. Mm hmm. Bad luck! Bad luck! Go. First piece done. <laughs> That's a bit of a prick. Oh well, we're gonna have to make it work. So now I use the offcuts. Hopefully this offcut's large enough and I'm not gonna smash it to pieces. Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! Smash it!
All right, so unfortunately we live in the country and you can't find any of the bits that you need. And I confidently thought that these might be good enough. Um, on normal flooring they would be, but because we're using 12 mil flooring, they were just breaking the tongue. What I was looking for was these guys. Whoop. So I had some left over from another job. So I managed to get this much done. At least I know it's straight, so I'm just gonna have to leave it at that for today, clean it all up and have to do a two hour round trip to find screws. <laughs> all right, day two of installing the flooring. If I had my time again, I would have done things a little bit differently, but I've never done it with this method of using a impact driver and just screwing it in. I've always used a floor stapler. So I'll show you what I've worked out and how I would have done it differently. And hopefully that saves you the pain in the butt that it's been for me. So you saw me do the string line before when I was lining up to make sure I could get it straight. What I would have done differently is I would have installed this piece here and I would have installed this piece here first and I would have measured it out with the string line and made sure that it was right. What I had to do in the end was a bit backwards. I installed the flooring out this way and then I wrapped around the tire and installed it backwards and tried to do some secret nails here and just nailing off the side there. It came up all right in the end, but I probably would have done it the other way just because then I know that it's straight. I hadn't done this method before, so I was a bit nervous about making sure that it was straight, but you know, lesson learned, don't do it that way. Unless you like seeing me humiliated. <laughs> so now what I've done is, I've essentially got my floor laid out a little bit so I can see where I'm gonna put the boards and see which boards were decent. I would have preferred to not have a tiny little piece in there, but I had to in order to get around the wheel hub and I was running short on screws, which I've now forked out. Heaps of cash for this guy, but you know, when you live in the country, you can't get stuff unless you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. Uh. All right, day three of doing the flooring. Yep, still here. Now it's taken a lot longer than what I wanted. We've had dramas with the flooring. It's meant to be the second best grade that you can get, but I think we got scammed a bit. But you're never happy. Because it's not like this piece here is 132 mil and it's meant to be 135 mil. And as they're butted up, I can really see the difference. I didn't measure it because I thought we've got a pretty good grade of flooring. It's not likely that they're gonna be different measurements, but I was wrong. And I'm not a flooring guy, so I don't know. Maybe this is normal, but I don't think it is. Not likely. So once he butts up to him, we're gonna have this gap and it's right in the main walkway, which is really annoying. See that? So what I might do is buzz off that little extra mill and then maybe I can crush it in together. The problem is the line's gonna have a bit of a bow in it. I think the board bowing in is less noticeable than a bloody three mil gap in the flooring. What a shame. But I will not be recommending them to anyone. Good night, scammers. Good night, scammers. <laughs> so these problems are why it's taken a little bit longer. This bit of the bus is the easiest bit, so I think this is going to be fine now. Well, if good means fine and fine means crap. That's a scientific term for crap in your pants. Minimal cuts, just a wheel hub, a service hole, and the engine bay area. And I know exactly what I'm doing with the service hole now, and I know what I'm doing with the engine bay. So it should be pretty straightforward from here on out. Thousands of tears later. <laughs> Well, thank Christ that's done. Wow, that was hard. I worked until nine o'clock last night, <laughs> trying to get it in, and I'm pretty happy with how it came up in the end. You know, it wasn't the best quality flooring considering it was meant to be the best, well, the second best quality flooring, but still made it work, looks really nice. Today, I'm buggered, I'm just having my morning coffee, and uh, yeah, Gonna do some crazy shopping and look at my camera, it's all blurry. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> Just so knackered. Um, so yeah, do some crazy shopping and then I'll uh, I'll clean up this mess and yeah, that'll be it. Flooring done. <laughs>